And out here, left. Okay. All right, go ahead. I'm a little bit used to the bearing in the ball socket. Bearing and the... Ball socket with the moment. Yeah. I know that the bearing has the, um, the two Z, X, and Y. Yep. But with the moment, I'm confused, and also with the ball socket, I know that. Yeah. The, the bearing and the hinges are all the same. They could have up to five unknowns. Correct? Three forces and two moments. Yes? They so could. When would we know that they would? They will let, it's the type of bearing that they, they make, they will let you know. For your cases in this book, always the moments are being neglected. That, if that's the problem. Yes. However, we have different type of bearing in industry that they make it such a way. The general, for your case, because there are too many unknown, they put the bearing next to each other or close to each other, enough close enough that to assume the moment applied there is negligible. It's there, but a small quantity. As I said, it's like the bearing, we put it, if the door is heavy, we put more bearing, more hinges there to eliminate the effect of the moment. So we end up with three forces. However, in case of bearing, most likely the rod can go this way as well, yes or no, freely, yes? Therefore, this force in the direction of axis of the bearing also could be equal to zero. We do the same thing for the hinges, although that's not true, but we are assuming there is no force going in that direction sometimes. So the five unknown, in many cases, actually in all your homework, unless we tell you in advance to take, to take into account your moment, you should not put it there. So if that was your question. Okay? All right, good. And then uh, sometimes, as I said, three unknown become two unknown because there is no axial yeah. thrust there. So th they will let you know in the, in the, in the text of the problem. Is only like three, or if there's no actual. No, I said it there in the handout. If you read it, I said that there is no couple uh -huh. and there is no axial thrust. That's okay. correct. In cert certain of them. Otherwise, it will be too many for you, and you cannot solve an indeterminate problem. They are solvable, but you cannot do it now. You have to wait a couple of years to do it. <laughs> okay? Next question, somebody asked me in the two force member, would it make any difference with which direction I choose for today's lecture? Yes, it makes a big difference. We are going to discuss that in detail because the two force member, especially when it is a straight line, a straight, it, the two force member could be in pure tension or pure compression. When it is on, in a, in a circ, half circular or half, you know, it's in angle, it's not a still pure tension or pure comp compression. However, this is what you do. If you have a two force member like that, the two, the f first of all, this is the fact. The forces must go through the two pin. Is that correct or not? However, you can assume, if that's what, you can assume like that, which pulls this apart in, way, in a way, or you assume equal and Opposite. You don't know which one is correct. In many cases, you can guess it because you see the look at the picture. So if the force is such a way that opens up the, the angle, so you can see it there. But in, at this stage, it's not required from you. So you put it this way, the answer comes. Right, the only thing is you have to be careful about this. You are still, when we come to this, the plus minus doesn't mean anything. These two forces are equal and opposite. opposite. This plus minus comes when you have x, y, z axis, for example, like that. You say, okay, this force is positive, these forces are positive, opposite to that is negative. When you put the forces like that, of course, notice that both of them have x component and y component, but they are in this format, and how, then what happened here, if you put that this for this, and the answer come, let's say, 500 Newton plus, what does it mean? means both of them are correct, everybody on it, but the magnitude of that force is 500. If your answer is minus 500, what does it mean? Means 
the direction that you have chosen is incorrect and then the reality is this if you solve for this problem and the answer come negative it means the forces should have been going like that in the same direction push or pull this is different sign convention which i'm going to discuss today discussion exactly with that what is the sign convention for the trusses which many people have problem understanding and you have to pay 100 percent pay attention to that otherwise you can never solve a trust or not even that you cannot go to the future courses determining the tension and compression and this is the following so for please write it down so this is the sign convention for the trusses sign convention for the trust member remember we said a member i don't care about the rest of the member this member goes to a joint like that and goes to a joint member this is a one of the member of the trust will be like that. In the trusses, usually the members are a straight line. Is that correct or not? Yes? And we decided that the member of the trust are a two-force member. member. So pure tension or pure compression. compression. Okay, where is that tension? No, I'm telling you, we have discussed it many times before. Actually, we were discussing it during the office hour with some student, and they said, yes, you have told this, us about that long time ago. Remember when we were talking about the cable? What's the difference between a cable and a rod? The cable can only take tension, no compression. Everybody understand. The rod can take compression or tension, either of them. Is that correct? This is a rod, and I'm telling you that the tension, now let's assume this rod is under tension. The tension is 1,000 pounds. Okay, where do I show it? Yes, you are, what you are telling me is correct, but you are not giving me the, the exact answer that I want to. We are correct. If tensions are equal and, oh, that's why you are doing that. But where is it? Anywhere you cut it, you will see it. Is that correct? See, the, the whole idea was free body diagram. Free body diagram, cut a member and replace that, mem that cut with the appropriate forces. Yes or no? What we do, which is true for the trusses, is this guy. Remember that. We are going to cut it very near the joint A and very near the joint B. And we discussed that before. Now a member, please draw this in your note. Now this is the member and this is the joint. A little piece of the member is there and a little bit of I don't care about the rest of this member. We are not discussing the entire truss. We are only talking about one particular member. Is that correct or not? First decide. I said this member is under tension. If this member is under tension, my forces must be like that. Everybody knows that scenario. My forces on the member should be equal to 1,000 pounds. Notice this has nothing to do with the plus, minus, as far as the static is concerned. A static, these forces have X component and Y, y component. This member is in tension, and from now on, we call this plus. Tension is a plus, compression is minus. minus. This is our sign convention. So please write it down. Tension in any member. When I say 1,000 tension, I will call it plus. If I write here a force, this is the force. Now change it, I cannot call, call it T. If I say one force is equal to 1,000 plus pound, I am assuming that force in the member causes a tension. Is that correct or not? However, if I, ask, if I call it compression, we are going to call it negative. So this is a positive format. Then I have drawn the member in tension. Everybody see that. But I'm going to put, we are going, I asked you last time to write it down. We are not drawing the free body diagram of the member. We are drawing the free body diagram of the joint remember that so what happened on the joint i have to put equal and opposite okay so this is all of the, them have the value of 1000 pound this blue one are the effect of the member on the joint the red one shows the member to be in tension from now on we never show the member this is the funny part we never show the member we only show the 
joint because we said we are going to use equilibrium of the joint. Remember what you wrote down? So you never see this. Or if you want, you, in back of your mind, that is there. But this is what you are drawing. Is that correct? Now, what have, can you categorize this? What is you see here? This is not plus minus by the static format. Yes? Mm -hmm. I want you to know that in a static, this is plus. Yes or no? Yeah. But is it tension or compression? What? Is it tension or compression? You don't know. That's exactly what I want to hear. You don't know. That doesn't define anything. Everybody, I want you to see the difference between this sign convention and this sign convention. Everybody understand that. If the member is in tension, we are going to call it plus. If the member is in compression, we are going to call it Minus. And people, some people, not all of you, which I don't want any of you to be in that category, when I draw this in future classes, as soon as, as, as what is there, they look at this statically, this is plus, and they say it's tension. Wrong. As you, as you just many of you mentioned, I don't know what that is. You, you, you want to know what happened to that? Look, is this statically plus, yes or no? Yes. What happened? If this member is plus or minus? minus? Because it is under compression. Do you see that? So we don't go by that. We go by the member to see whether the member gets smaller or longer. So the, look at the same force. This is the same force. It still is plus. But if I put my member here, now it is in? Ten. Notice that blue arrow is still saying that. So you don't go by a static. A static sign remains the same. We never change it. It's universal. Always positive x is defined. Positive y is defined. As a matter of fact, look here. These forces have x component and actually this one has x component. If I choose this as my x and y, look at this force. This one is, has an x component, negative. It has a y component, Negative. This force has an X component, positive, Y component. But this, both of them together show the temp member is in tension. How do I recognize that? Can you tell me what's happening there? Anytime the blue forces go away from the joint, the member is in tension. Write it down. This format was the tension format, wasn't it? Yes? So write it down in your note. When the forces are going away from the joint, the member connecting those two joints together is in tension. tension. Are you with me? No? Why not? Tired? Worried about the quiz? Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. So don't worry. Listen to me. Did you get the idea? Probably not. So please listen. This is very important. If you want to continue with this one, this, the way I draw it here, the member again was here. Remember, I draw it one more time. The member was here. And these two forces, I draw it in tension mode. So as you see, the forces at the joint going away from the member. The member, I'm going to erase. Where is my eraser? There. So it's going. Opposite to that, of course, will be in? Compression. Now, what happened in compression member in trusses is this. I draw another member here. So show the same thing exactly again. This is a joint. This time this is joint C. And this is member attaching joint C and D together. Again, this are, could be connected to other side. Then I disconnect here. I disconnect there as you saw it. Very near the joint, very near the joint as we were doing before. So uh, this time I'm going to put the member in compressive mode. So look at that. So the compressive is like that. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now look what happened here. The forces are going toward the joint. Everybody understand that? This has nothing to do with the static plus or minus. This is a new sign convention. Everybody should learn it. I gave you in detail. You should use it in your homework assignment, which I'm going to do as example right now. So anytime I draw by forces going away from the joint, it is not plus or minus. It is going away from the joint. I am assuming the member is in tension. If it goes toward the joint, the member is in compression. That's the sign conversion. Got it? Yes? So let's apply it to our first problem. Now let's go to your first handout question. It is in your handout, the first problem in your handout. And let's start with that one because I already told you what we have to do. 
It's two step process, which is happen for all the trusses from now all the frame. This step one is the same. Step two is it will be changed depend what type of a structure we have and what type of the uh, what type of the uh, method. What method do we use there? Okay, this problem you have it in in your handout. It is a truss which has a flat roof on top. Sometimes they have roof, sometimes they are not. There is a, a pin, oh, there is a pin connection here. I believe there is a roller there, roller connection there. Then the members are looking like that. There is a three kilonewton force there going at this joint. This joint is joint A. All the joints, remember, assume to be all member coming together as pin connected. That was the idea of the truss. Otherwise, it will not be a truss. That's condition one. Condition two, all the forces should be at the joint. In other words, I cannot have here a force at the middle of the member. Because I do that, that member is going to bend downward. It will not be, no longer be a two force. Member, that's the whole idea here. So if I have any forces, I have to put it at the joint or divide it in, for example, if there is a force at the middle, we sort of divide it, put half there, half there. That's what we do. Is that correct or not? So we apply the forces at the joint. What else do we have here? We have another 10 kilonewton here, forces coming from the top. This could be the weight of the roof or ceiling or whatever you have. This will be the wind pressure coming from one side, etc., etc. That's how you design the trusses for future as engineering work. Is that correct? Or? Yeah. Now, this has now become a static problem. We want to find out what was the goal, as I said it last time, just refreshing your memory after the long weekend. <laughs> what was the goal? Forget about that. We are not there. These are all, this is not, nothing to do with that table, okay? This is only joint, and this is not even the equilibrium. Yeah, when we go to the joint, it's the equilibrium of particle, way back when we were studying it. Is that correct? Or not? However, this is a pin. This is a roller. What was the step one? Consider the equilibrium of entire truss and find the reaction is possible. Yes or no? How many reactions do we have there? Yeah. No, three. We have here. These are now, put it in color if you wish. So put the, your reaction in color, blue or red or whatever, however you want to. So here we have AX, and here we have AY. And here, let's finish the lettering as we have it there. So that's A, this is what's A, B joint A, B, C, D, E, F, etc., etc. This is typical. Then the distances. This is two meter. This is two meter. This is one and a half meter. So slope is four run and three rise for the member FD. And now I put here my reaction here. This is a roller. So you know what to do that. There is only EY. How many unknown do you have? Three unknown. Can you solve it? Of course, this is a very simple problem compared to all the homework you did here. You, can, you should be able to do it. Yes or no? I'm going to bypass that because that's very simple. You take the moment about point A. This one has moment. This one doesn't. This one has moment. This one has moment. This one has moment. You calculate EY. Is that correct or not? So EY comes out to be equal to, maybe I should do it. Anyhow, sigma M, let's do it. Sigma M <laughs> at point Anytime I want to shortcut, then I have to explain it twice anyway. Should, uh, at point A equal to zero, then what you get there, you get three kilonewton multiplied by one and a half, and it's going that way, therefore it is negative. Then you have four kilonewton times this distance two and it is going that way is negative. Then you have 10 times four is going clockwise, it still is negative. Then plus, because this one having a moment, E times EY times 
4, and that one is plus equal to 0. You solve for EY. I hope we didn't miss anything. No, that's correct. So we get the EY, because 8 kilonewton doesn't have any moment. So EY ends up to be equal to 13.13 13, 13, 13 kilonewton. So as soon as you find this 13.13 .13 kilonewton, this is really not related to this chapter. This is related to previous chapter. All these problems you, you submitted to the have an equilibrium, yes or no. So that's, that's nothing new there. Then this AY become 8.87. And AX actually become equal to minus 3. That's what you were asking. These are all in kilonewton. Because if 3 kilonewton go that way, obviously AX should be going to the left, but I draw to the right. Now, here is the key. I said it last time. I'm saying it again. When there are unknown forces, you always draw it in positive direction. The same thing for the member now. Our tension is positive. Our compression is negative. When I draw my joint, which is my next step, step two was finding a joint with two member only. Yes? What are those two joints? B would not be A, because A, how many members A has? Three. Three. It's not solvable. This has two. two. I should go either to A, E, or B, M. And then, according to this rule, if I put it this way, the forces, the members are in tension. If I put it opposite, the members are in, but write it down in your note. When you are looking for the forces and the forces are unknown, you always put them in the tension mode. We always put unknown forces in tension mode for the members. OK. Of course, there are a couple of members like this, which is very simple. So this actually does not require any, any writing any equation. Let's go to joint B, and joint B is very simple. OK, this is free body diagram, and please specify, of joint B. In your note, your quizzes, your homework, that's how you should do. Actually, this does not require any calculation, because it has two forces, horizontal and vertical, and has two members, one vertical and one Horizontal, so there is nothing to solve there. Everybody see what, uh, what I'm talking about. However, these are your forces, external forces. A 3 kilonewton goes there, and a 8 kilonewton goes there, and two members being cut. Obviously, this member, the force in this member is along the member. The force in this member is along the member. Obviously, you know what the value. What's the value of this should be? Three going that way. I don't have to do any analysis there. So as soon as I put three going that way, which is the force in member, look at it, the force in member BC, yes or no? Yeah. Correct? What is member BC on there? Is it tension or compression? compression. You see, like, is this tension or compression? Is it going away from the joint or going toward the joint? You see, that's what it's going toward the joint, so the member is in compression. compression. So I already solved that. 3 kilonewton in compression. Yes, sir. What about this one? As I said, this does not have any, any calculation. This is going down. This must be going up. up. So if I draw the force in this member, which is force in member what? First member BA. What is that? Is it tension or compression? Compression. compression. We already solved for this too. So this is equal to 8 kilonewton in compression. We transfer this usually to the, mem to the trust to see how many members left. Now, where can I go? I can go now to A. A, A, A. Everybody understand? I can now go to A because one of them is known. I have two more unknown for it, which solve lots of headache here for we solve here. Is that correct or not? Or I can go to E because E is very simple. Everybody understand that? E must be how much? We start even doing now. Let's see whether I can check you. E should be 13.13 .13 going down. Therefore, this member is also under compression. compression. So let's write it down. Very good. So you are with me. So if, guys, if you want me to go into detail, I can. But the way you're doing it is perfect. So at E, 
we have external of 13.13 kilonewton, <laughs> and we have only two member this. This one, you said it should be going down. That's what you said. So therefore, that member is also on there. Compression, what's the value of this member? What's the other? What should I have there? Is there any other horizontal force there? So that's, we call it zero member. There are lots of zero member there. I will explain it to that. That has a zero force on it. Now, why it is zero force, though, don't get me wrong. When you do real trusses, exam, I mean, do uh, design of trusses, sometimes the wind goes this way, sometimes the wind goes from the other side. So you have to design that with two set of loading, not one set of loading, to see which one is the worst scenario. So some member that now it is zero member, may, later on maybe get other forces. So please don't worry about if you, you think at the beginning, if this is zero member, why should I have it there? I should eliminate that. Is that, otherwise the member will not be, first of all, uh, I mean, the trust will not be stable, first of all, and secondly, the same member, when they, because you don't know which side the earthquake comes, which side the wind could be this way, wind could be that way, you have to design it for few set of loading. Is understood that, especially for civil engineering, is that analysis. Anyhow, that member is zero, write it down, and this member is 13.13 kilonewton in compression. So that one, the, look how many member just was solved by that. Now you said let's go to joint A. For joint A, I'm going to erase that now that it's been established, this criteria being established. Now I go to joint A, see what we have at joint A. But please write it down in your note. Free body diagram, you can simplify that. Free body diagram of joint A. Okay, here is joint A. Let's see what we have there. First, please do not forget the external load. Notice what we are telling you here. This AX, AY, EY, 10, 4, 8, 3, they are all external, yes or no? What we are trying to solve here, these forces are internal. This is how the member is going to be designed in future based on this number because the member either become tension or it become in compression and as I said before, uh, that's the first uh, object we are going to design in ME218, a two-force member. How to design it, how to come up with the sizes, what material should I use? Should I use wood, should I use steel, should I use hollow cross section? All, that? all of that, those questions will be answered in the strength of material. So in a way, it's engineering work. We are determining which, which of this rod, how, uh, this rod, which one is in tension and which one is in the compression. So far, all, all of them seems to be under compression, but that's not true. So we go to joint A now. To joint A, we'll see that there is an external load. So of now, here I can go accurate. So here I have three kilonewton going to the left because AX was negative, yes or no? And I have, these are external again. How much load did I have here? 8.87, I cannot see it from there. Can you tell me? Kilonewton. Now, how many member is there? See, draw, draw this little, it's not necessary. This is the beginning of the work, so I draw those little pieces there to show you that three member is being cut. I should have three forces there, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Notice, without even looking there, what I have, what I, I do not have, this time I'm going to use the red for my internal forces. I'm going, this one is unknown, yes or no? This one is unknown, look what I'm drawing, right? Are they in tension or compression? Did I put it in tension or compression? Tension. tension, that's what I asked you to write. You see, without even looking which is which, I don't care about that. I always put it in tension mode. And this one, I'm going to call it force in member A, F. This one is force in member A, C, correct. But this one, I already know. What's the value of that one? The value of that eight kilonewton in compression. So which side is compression, upward or downward? Downwards. Downward, very good, so I'm very impressed. So, <laughs> so I put this one in blue that you know that's internal, not external. This black one are external, the blue are internal, blue already been resolved, these two are not unresolved. Is that correct or not? This is eight kilonewton, and the slope of this one, we need the slope of that. The slope of that one is two, or four run and three rise. Is that correct or not? 
four, two verse, verses one and a half, or three, four verses three, right? Yeah. Four. The famous three, four, five, yeah? Okay. Now, can I solve this? Notice again, this is the equilibrium of particle. What particle are we talking about? Joint A. A. Five forces going there. Three of them known and two of them are known. Sigma Fx equal to zero and sigma F Y. Okay, let's use that. So sigma Fx equal to, now look at it. We have minus three kilonewton there. You can write it like that or put the kilonewton. This one doesn't have anything, that one. Then plus FAF going to the right and then plus four-fifth of F. AC going to the right equal to zero. Correct? Can I solve it? Not yet. Then I go to sigma FY. There is two equation for two unknown. And sigma FY equal to. Now here I have minus eight kilonewton. Of course, that everything is in kilonewton. You can simplify it like that. Then here I have plus 8.87 kilonewton, nothing here, and then I have plus three-fifth of FAC equal to zero. FAC ends up to be equal to three-fifth of F. Okay. AC should be equal to minus 0.87 kilonewton, or FAC become equal to minus 1.45 kilonewton. What this minus indicate? I'm just putting here an arrow for you to notice. What that minus indicate? At minus indicate, it is. It is in compression because I decided it is plus. It didn't end up plus. But never, ever choose that unknown as a compression. Now, if you choose it at compression and the answer comes negative, it means it is tension. tension. Now, I don't have to worry about it because anytime I see a plus, it is automatically tension. Anytime it is a minus, it automatically is compression because I have chosen my red marker, look at it, in the tension mode. Everybody understand that. As soon as you change that, some of you probably will do, I hope not. If you put FAC this way, because you guessed it, this is going to be in compression. Everybody understand that. If you put it that way, the answer would have come plus. But it is in compression. We don't want that. Everybody understand that. Everybody see what I'm talking about. So this is automatic. Automatic the sign take care of itself. If you choose your unknown forces in Tension mode, everybody on it. Not plus or minus. In tension mode, which in our new sign convention is plus. Is that correct or not? And so on and so forth. So that member still is in compression. Then we put it that here in this one to calculate FAF. So you calculate FAF. Everybody <coughs> understand what I'm saying. That, that FAF is very simple. FAF ends up to be equal to 4.16. 4. plus. 4.16 kilonewton. So that member is in tension. That member is in compression. So we got two more results. This one, 4.16 in tension. That one is 1.45. When it is in compression, we don't have to put minus here. That's for your our analysis to come plus and minus. How many more forces member do we have? I can go to for joint F, or I can go to joint C, all of them accept it. Or I can go to joint D, all of them accept it. Let's go to joint D this time. Is that correct or not? I don't have to repeat that. Now remember that. The only problem is this. If you make a mistake in the first joint, it may, not necessarily all because I can use this joint, it may carry it into, definitely will carry it into the new calculation. Is that correct or not? So you cannot make any mistake. But it is simple. <laughs> Sorry to say, that's engineering work. Anytime you make a mistake in your office or you do something, you have to pay a penalty. And the maximum penalty is going to jail, I guess. <laughs> yes, it has happened. Haven't you heard it? 
So you cannot make mistake, right? Because if you are this, why the, especially about the static, <laughs> because it's, uh, whatever you do afterwards is based on the static. Remember that. So you have to find the forces in order to design something. If your forces is wrong, what are you designing? If you are designing a member for tension and in reality it is in compression, who buys that, that, that from you? Is that correct or not? Yes? Do you understand what I'm saying? That Again, for the last time, don't take your static lightly. You want to get at least B plus. At, <laughs> at least. least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least B plus in order to be a good engineer. That's what I said. However, if you are struggling with the static, please, again, just, just change your habit. Do a little bit more work. Many of you have noticed quite a change. I noticed as we go progressing, your grades are improving. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But learning and learning it more uh, uh, according to the rule that being uh, discussed in class. Anyhow, let's, let's go to joint. D, let's do the joint D, which is simple enough. So write down in your note again, joint D. And then we go to joint D. At joint D, we have three member and one external load. We have a 10 kilonewton of external load. Then we have a member here, a member here. As you see, this is keep repeating. You get tired of this after a while. This is doing the same thing again and again and again, correct? Anyhow, and then, we come here to this member. One of them is known. That member is 13, 13 kilonewton in compression. So which direction should I draw it? Up. You see, don't assume it is plus. As soon as going toward the joint, the member is in compression. Yes or no? Yes? You're not shaking your head. Yes? Yes? Wrong? Look. This is the member, the force going to be like that. Equal and opposite. So the member is in compression. As long as it's going toward the joint, the member is in compression. It's nothing to do with that plus minus that we are used to so far about x axis and y axis. Toward the joint, compression, away from the joint is tension. Is that understood? What's the value of that? The value of that is 13. 13.13 kilonewton. Now, the other two are in? I don't know. The other two are unknown. Therefore, I'm going to draw them again at what, what, with what I just asked you to do is in tension. So that is joint D. So this is FDC. This is FDC. This is FDF in tension. And this is joint D, obviously. And then, again, this is four run and three rise. Now, this time, let's do something different, because generally we write sigma fx and sigma fy. We look here. These two both have x component. Why not sigma fy first? Is that correct or not, as you have done it in your homework? So writing sigma fy first, you immediately solve this one first. So sigma fy equal to 0 gives me Minus 10, I have minus 10 here, plus 13, 13 here. Then I have minus, because this is now a static. Remember, in the static, this doesn't change. The static, everything going upward is plus, everything going downward is minus. This has a negative component going down, and the negative component is minus 3 fifth of FDF. 3 fifth, is that correct? Or equal to 0. You solve for FDF, and you, I have it here. You can check it your, yourself. FDF become equal to 5.21. Now this, go, this is negative goes to that, become plus. This is plus, so it become plus. 5.21, and it is plus kilonewton. Therefore, it is in tension. That direction is correct. Obviously, everybody now can see that this direction is wrong. If this is correct and gives me a negative x, this is a negative x. It cannot be. Everybody understand what I'm saying. So that one must be in compression. Everybody under. But let's write sigma fx. So sigma fx equal to 0. Sigma fx equal to 0. We get there minus fdc 
that one, minus 4 fifth of FDF, but FDF already is 5.21, equal to 0, and FDC become equal to minus 4.17, minus 4.17 kilonewton. That minus indicating it is in compression. compression. So this is 4.17 in compression. Sorry. And the other one was 5.21, 5.21 in tension. And then I can go either to join C, because there is only one left here, or joint F. Both of them are acceptable. But I am not going to do that because that's a simple or repeat because everybody can do that. That ends up to be. If I go, let's say, if I go to joint F and draw this free body diagram, which everybody can do, this is known, this is zero, this is in tension going away, this one is in tension going away, then I can solve for that one. Everybody understand? That ends up to be 3.13 in compression. What joint is left now that I didn't touch? Joint C. Should I use it or not? Yes. If joint C doesn't balance, so I'm going to repeat the whole thing again. Is that <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't balance, what does it show? If some of, the, some of the forces in the x direction is not equal to 0 in end of minus 5, I must have done a mistake somewhere. Is that correct? Some of the forces. So please write down in your note. The last joint, you do it for accuracy of your work. You, do, you go and do the balance of that joint, which all the forces being known, but I am not going to spend time here showing you that. But if it doesn't balance out, then it is something wrong with your calculation. It must be checked. Let's put it this way. Correct? If it ends up sigma fx equal to 0, if it ends up very small quantity, that is the approximation within 0.01 or 0.2 something, that, that is acceptable because you may round off your number, is that, as I did it here, to three digits. Is that correct or not? However, generally should be that. Now, before I go to the next, next uh, uh, Example, we are going to talk about zero force member. Notice that you're a special member first. Let's call it the special member. Notice this member sort of was a special. Everybody understand that. This was special. You can gather right away what is the, the there are more like that. You, if you detect that in a truss, your work become much simpler. Let's look at some of them, which we call it special member or zero force member, either way. So let's look at this, some of them, some of them obvious to you, some of them is not. Let's end, we end up with a joint like this and nothing else. There are some of your trusses, you will see that. There is a joint there, three member, two of them are horizontal, one of them are, is, one of them is vertical. What do you think you should end up here without even doing any analysis? Notice if I put three forces here, this force F, this force F and this force F. Everybody understand that. This two must be equal and opposite. So either both tension or both compression. Either. However, this one should be equal to zero. That's a zero force. Now, don't get me wrong. If there is a force hanging here, many times this is like that. And that force has a value. This force must be equal to F. This was in case there is no F. If there is no F, this is what I'm showing that. This is F and these two must be equal and opposite. Yes or no? Now, this one everybody sees. What they don't see is this one. Is that the same thing? All you have to do, turn this around. Everybody understand. Although it's not along the x and y, but I don't care. If I put a force here, I have to. Yes or no? Because the, force, the member are two force members. I have to put a force there. Yes or no? These two, no matter what the magnitude of them, must be equal and opposite. And this one must be equal to zero. Now, why that is true? Because I can put my x-axis here and... 
y axis there. When then these two become along the x, the other one become along the y, and then there have no other quantity to balance it, so that one become equal to zero. And there is another one which is in our next example. So please look out for this zero force member always. In any of your trusses that I have given you, there are several zero force member. Pick up those first because you don't have to do analysis there. It is much simpler. Another example of that is this one, which comes into your next example. You, I have, I, I guess I have one member here, one member there. What should be the value of this? I put here a T. You tell me what's going to happen. Now, let's change that to something else. First, let's change this one. <laughs> let's not jump around. Let's say that instead of going like that, let's go to this one. First. What do you think going to happen here? What? What should be the value of this one? Let's say this is T1. I put here this is T2 and this is T3. Tension 1, tension 2, tension 3. Yes. What's the value of T3 you think it should be? What? How much? Zero. Great. Why? No. As soon as you say that, I say why? still need zero in the first What? You still need no. Correct. Correct. The answer I asked, what, why this T3 should be equal to zero? Because this is in angle, yes or no? Okay, it has an X component. X component can add or subtract from T1, which balances with this one. But it has also a Y component, yes. Is there any, anything else to balance the Y component? So that must be equal to zero. So that force must be equal to zero. I cannot find a force with a magnitude having no Y component except zero. Is that correct or not? Therefore, although it is not recognizable soon, but write it down. This 3, 3 equal to, again, zero, and this T2 and T1 must be equal and opposite, because I have no force here to balance the Y component of that force. Everybody understand. However, if there is a force hanging there, that changes. Again, don't get me wrong. This is if there is no force there. Is that correct or not? Yes? You will see uh, and see that you are looking at some other example and goes like. And the last one that I was going to ask is like this one. Now, the, this is that. Now, this one and that one. T1 and T2. What's the value of T2? Like here. What's the value of T2? Because I have no vertical count. Must be equal to T2. So, and then what's the value of T1 there? Zero. Correct. So if you have a system like that, which is in your next exam, that one equal to zero. So everybody getting the idea. Let me, I have 10 minutes. I can show you the next procedure because this is all the same. You have to repeat this. 30 times for the, if you have 30 joints, but be, be careful. If your truss is symmetrical as far as the load and as far as the distance is concerned, you only do need only one half of truss, remember, and some of them are. If they are not uh, symmetrical, then you have to do all the joints. I believe I give you two, only two or three method of joint. We call this method, method of joint, but I want to give you the highlight of the other problem without doing it. The second example in your handout is the following. So I'm going to erase that, just show you a few special scenario there, and I leave the rest of it for you to do at home. It's not that difficult. This is the second question in your handout, which, which is the following. So it is started here with a joint and going up like this, joint and then goes like that. Here we go. So here is a member. There is a member like that. This member going like this. And another member here, member here, and member there. Nothing else there. There is a pin connection here. And there is a pin connection to the wall here. On top of that, this is G. This is point A. B, C, these are all pin connected trusses. C, D, E, and F. There is a force P1 hanging there in your handout. There is a force P2 hanging there. The value of P1 and P2, I believe, is given to you. Ten, P1 equal to 10 kilonewton. This is 10 
kilonewton. This one P is a 15 kilonewton. And then the distances, this is 4 meter. This is 2 meter. And height of this is also 4 meter. So make the slope of this line at 45 degree, 4 meter. And this one is less. This one is 2 meter. So the slope is 2 to 1. 2 over 2 vertical, 1 horizontal. Of course, step 1. Find the reaction at the support, yes or no? Which is, again, going back to this chap previous chapter. Finding the reaction at the support has nothing to do with this, this chapter. It is step one, is previous chapter. A rigid body, we don't care whether this is truss or frame or machine or whatever it is. We want to find how many unknown do I have at A? Let's put it here. A, X, and? A, Y. Okay, A, X, and A, Y. How many unknown do I have at G? No, I want to hear that. I, that's what exactly my point. Notice I heard, I believe I heard one correct answer and many other answer which is correct. In general, that's a pin, yes or no? In pin, you should put GX and GY. However, this is a truss, yes or no? Remember that. If if there was another member here or another member like that, I would have put there GX and GY. But however, is this a two-force member? So the only cap, I can have a horizontal force there. I cannot have any vertical force because this is a two-force member. Remember that. That's because of that idea, which I used it in one of my examples previously. That member, BG, is a two-force member. Yes or no? The force must be only horizontal. There is nothing there vertically to balance that, so GY must be equal to zero, a special case. Again, remember. The only reason I'm showing you this, to show that idea there. Therefore, here you have to put only GX. Is that correct or not? Now, how many unknowns do you have? One, two, and three. Can you solve it? Yes. yes. So I'm going to put it there. So that's, that's all I wanted to say. So AY become equal to actually GX become equal to 27 and a half uh, kilonewton going in that, oh, no, minus 20. Actually, it is become minus, sorry, GX become equal to minus 27 and a half. That means it should be on this direction. AX is 27 and a half kilonewton in that direction. Is AY is simple. AY is 10 plus. 15 must be equal to 25 kilonewton. Is that correct or not? Yes. The rest, no. Look at, before I go any further, what's the, what is the force in this member? Look at this. What's the force in this member? Zero. What's the force in that member? Zero, because of this joint. I already explained it to you. Because when I look at this joint, I have one going here, one going there. It's impossible. So that's zero. The, the force in this member would be what? The force in that member would be, if this is going that way, in reality that's going to go that way. Is that correct or not? Yes. So the member must be going that way. Therefore, as you see, when I pull it this one down, this is going to be a stretch. Is that correct or not? So it's going to be in tension. So it would be 27 and a half kilonewton is in tension. Already you have three of them. There is no other zero member, except I know this one. This two, if this is zero, actually this is, must be equal to zero, and that one must be equal to what? <coughs> Come on, this is the, co the co common sense you don't need. That must be 15 kilonewton going up, which is in tension. tension. Very good. 15 kilonewton. At the, notice, one, before we start solving it, by using your head, you have one, two, three, Let's say this was a quiz, which previously was a quiz. You come to this conclusion, you're already giving me indication, you know you are static. Remember that? Now you have 10 more minutes, 7 more minutes to finish it. So if you don't finish it, I, I tend to give you more credit because you are showing me all the little details. So it's not a really question of having 15 minutes. Many of you complain that in quiz time, I have, time is not enough. I know that. You don't have to worry about it. 
I have done enough that, of that to know that 15 minutes sometime for my quiz is not enough. But all you have to do, show me that you know what you are doing. Everybody understand that. Of course, you start in the wrong scenario. You do something very drastically unstatic. <laughs> means it has related to the, that. Then you eat what? Don't go away. We have still three minutes to give you another, <laughs> another procedure. Otherwise, we can never finish that. Now, the second procedure, what was the problem with this one? Let me explain to you. I do the example next time because we don't have time. So please listen to me. This is for the, there are one or two more problems. I use method of section. This method, there was a big problem. What was the problem? If I make a mistake in one of them, that mistake will be carrying into other one. Right? Method of section. Please at least write the procedure that next time I can do the example. In method of section, it is down in your handout too, so you can write it there. Step one is the same, so step one doesn't change. Step two, cut the truss into two parts. Cut, cut the truss into two parts in such a way, semicolon, in such a way not to cut more than three members. In such a way not cutting more than three member, then comma again. Then use equilibrium of rigid body, use equilibrium of rigid body to solve for those unknown forces. Now, and repeat the process. Let's go to this problem. Method of joint, I already told you. You go from this joint, then you go to this joint, then you go to that joint, you go to that, you do it. Is that correct or not? Method step, this is, I want to use method of section. So, first of all, I find my reaction. I already find my reaction, right? Let's say that I want to cut this member. There are many ways to cut this, this truss into half. I can cut it like that. Is this advisable? Mm -hmm. Look, I, I just told you, one, two, three, and? Four. That become four unknown, I cannot solve it. I cannot have more than three, three unknown, therefore you are cutting it at three spots. So, but I can cut it like that, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Just say, look what happened here. If I cut it like that, so, <laughs> so give me a couple of minutes. I have to give, this is it. Each member represents a force. This is no longer equilibrium of particle. This is equilibrium of rigid body. So I have but draw that. This is solution to the same problem. By method of section. A force here, a force here, a force here. Yes or no? How many unknown forces do I have? Three. Three. How many equations do I have? Three. Three. Sigma Fx, sigma Fy, and sigma M. Where should I take my M about? This point. Or this point. Take the moment about F, you immediately find that one. Is that correct or not? And then you sigma Fx, or, or take the moment about that one, either way. So you take that one and take the moment about the point and the two sigma, it just solves. So let's leave it at that. Let's go to the quiz. And because I don't want to cut <coughs> your tweet quiz time. So before Thursday, please do all your homework that you can ask any question because Thursday we are going to go to the frame and machine. Remember that. So we are a little bit behind and we want to catch up. So we are done. Yeah. Thank you.